Hello, this video presentation is brought to you by PickaWeb and we'll be looking at how to choose the right web hosting for your business. I'll be your host today. My name is Tony Messer and I'm one of the founders of PickaWeb.co.uk and MaximaLocal.co.uk. At PickaWeb we offer a full range of low-cost domains and hosting services and Maxima Local, we help businesses with their web design, web marketing, social media management, that type of thing. So if you need any help on any of those services, we'd love to hear from you. So first things first, what is web hosting? Well, if you want to get online, you're going to need a couple of things. The first thing you're going to need is your domain name and you're going to need a web hosting service as well. So your domain name, that's effectively your internet real estate. That's your name on the internet. However, when you buy a domain name, um, you can't actually have a website unless you have a hosting service, so you'll need both of them. And the web hosting, that's basically the physical infrastructure of the web hosting. Um, so that provides the servers, the network connectivity, and the um, secure data center facility where the servers are actually located. And there are four main types of hosting that you need to be familiar with. The first is shared hosting, then there's reseller hosting, virtual private servers or VPS as they're more commonly known, and finally dedicated server. So let's just take a moment or two to have a look at each in turn. So shared hosting, this is the most popular form of hosting and it's called shared because uh, clients will share a server's resource and if you're not familiar with that term server just think of it basically as being a powerful computer and the server the, the main resources that it consists of is RAM which is the memory then the disk space the CPU like the central processing unit and everything you would get in a normal uh, PC or laptop but on a bigger uh, more resilient scale and we'll look at that in a moment or two and the great thing about shared hosting is it's very low cost, it's instantly set up. As soon as you order your service, you'll receive um, a welcome email with all of the details so you can get on and start publishing your website, setting up your emails and that type of thing. And you manage everything through a central control panel. For example, cPanel is a very popular one. And think of this as being like mission control for your hosting service. You'll get emails so you can set up your emails and configure them with um, uh, your mobile device or if you use Gmail something like that you can set up with Gmail or Outlook whichever type of um, uh, email program you use but especially these days people like to get their emails on the go so they're fully compatible with mobile phones tablets that type of thing with shared hosting you'll get also get things like applications free applications if you're building a blog you can use WordPress if you want to set up an online shop there's loads of e-commerce options to choose things like Press to shop Magento. And with shared hosting, um, it's a gentle learning curve. However, the, the only thing you need to be, be aware of is that there's a low level of customization. If you've got complex hosting requirements, or if you want to host um, a particularly uh, exotic kind of tool that has certain types of settings, it may not be the option for you, but I'll, I'll come on to how you can address those in a moment or two. Then there's reseller hosting. And with reseller hosting, this is where you get a bulk amount of hosting space which you can then resell onto your clients. And the beauty of this is that you can develop additional recurring revenue stream, streams for your business. So let's say, for example, you're a web designer or a de developer or maybe an agency, that's perfect for you or some kind of web professional because it means you can develop that ongoing recurring revenue stream for your business. And the advantage of reseller hosting is that you get a master control panel and this is where you can add and remove your uh, and edit your clients so you can create different plans for them, uh, create their hosting packages and you effectively give them uh, the ability to host their own websites and have their own email accounts and that type of thing. So each of your customers will get their own cPanel control panel um, and like, as with shared hosting you are sharing resources so things like RAM and disk space and CPU and that means that it's a low cost option for you and there's also it's also a gentle learning curve but um, as with uh, shared hosting it is um, you don't have much room for customization so if you're running those exotic tools etc it might not be the best option for you and also you do need to provide first line support for your customers so if they need help setting up email addresses or whatever you need to be there to support them then we have virtual private servers or VPS. 
And this is where you get a physical server and it's split into logical or virtual servers using a virtualization software. And this means that you can uh, that we can offer different types of operating system on the same physical machine. And the beauty of a virtual private service is they're very flexible. You can create exactly the configuration that you want. They're very fast to set up. You can upgrade or downgrade them on the fly. So you can add things like CPU or RAM or disk space, that type of thing. So they're extremely scalable. You can start off with, say, one core and a couple of gigabytes of RAM. And then you can go up to you know maybe eight cores and 32 gig of RAM or whatever it is that you need. Another thing with uh, VPS is that they can be made available in a high availability option, which is how PickleWeb offers ours. So this is like a cloud formation where data is stored uh, across several physical machines instead of just having one um, server. We've got multiple servers, and your and your your data is spread over them. So that means even if one machine fails completely, which is extremely unlikely, there will be no interruption to service. They are more expensive than shared or reseller uh, hosting, but you do get that extra flexibility uh, and scalability, and you do need some server administration skills. If you're not comfortable doing that, then we, for example, at PickerWeb will offer a server administration service as an extra add-on. And then finally, we have dedicated servers. And with a dedicated server, as its name suggests, there's zero sharing. It's one physical machine for one client. It's actually one server, one box that you can actually see and touch. Um, and it's a high powered option. They're very secure. You're not going to have any issues with noisy neighbors or anything like that. But they are more expensive from the start because you have to pay for that extra, um, uh, those extra resources. They also take a little bit longer to set up than a VPS. A VPS can be spun up in a couple of minutes, whereas with a, with a dedicated server, you need a technician to actually um, set everything up. So it may take between one to two hours. Also, ultimately, whilst they're extremely powerful, they're not as scalable as a VPS because you are constrained by the physical um, limits of the actual dedicated server that you've got. So in terms of the number of um, CPU cores that you can have or the number of RAM. You may be constrained by the number of physical RAM slots in that machine. Again, as with a VPS, it does need server administration skills and um, if you want to have more high availability options, things like um, RAID or dual power supplies, dual network cards, that does come at a cost. So let's just take a step back a little bit and look at the data center. And the data center, this really is the home of web hosting. And this is a secure, uh, multi-million pound purpose-built facility. And here, the servers are stored in secure racks. And the data center it has redundancy designed and built in right from the beginning. So things like power, telecoms, cooling, and network infrastructure has all got dual um, options to make sure that if one fails, there's a continuation of service. And likewise, security is built in from the ground up for things like you know, physical security, access uh, or fire prevention, fire suppression systems, etc. So let's have a um, take a moment or two to, to consider the server hardware configuration. How, how is a server configured? Well, the main components in a server here we've got the processor, which is also called the CPU. And usually uh, you'll have this in a dual configuration. So each server will have a dual um, set of CPUs. And these can be made up of, um, of processors that will have a particular number of cores. And the more cores you have, the faster the, the server will run, the more performance you get out of it. And with PickerWeb, for example, we'll always use dual um, CPUs with multiple cores in them. Then there's memory, which is RAM, and that's essential for performance. As, as, you, as you'd get with your, your laptop or your desktop, the more RAM you add, that you add, the faster it will run, and the same with a server. But when you consider that some of these servers can handle um, something like 760 or so gigabytes of RAM, that's a huge amount of RAM, and uh, so they can run extremely fast. They're built for performance. Then we've got the hard drives and these will be configured in a hot swap configuration so if a, if a hard drive does fail it can um, it will the server administrator will be notified and we, and one and a technician can just remove the disk whilst the server is still working with no downtime and just replace it with a new one 
So there are several types of hard drive to consider. There's the older SATA types and they're, they're typically 7.2K and the 7.2K refers to the amount of revolutions that the disk spins per minute. These types of disks, they're good for backup. We wouldn't use them on frontline hosting, for example. The next option up is a SAS disk and that's 10K SAS. For example, you get 10K or 15K SAS. Now these are enterprise grade hard drives and these are typically what we will use for frontline hosting services. Even on our budget hosting plan, you'll be on a really reliable, fast um, 10K SAS drive. And then finally, SSD or solid state drive. And these are the future of data storage. There's no moving parts in them whatsoever. They're extremely fast. They're tens, in some cases, hundreds of times faster than the older um, types of um, drives. However, you need to be aware that at the moment, they are more expensive and they don't have the capacity of the older um, SATA uh, or SAS type drives. Then in each server, you'll have a RAID controller. And you can have a software or a hardware controller. We use uh, hard, uh, hardware RAID controllers. And RAID stands for red uh, Redundant Array of Inexpensive Disks. And what this does, there's all ty different types of RAID. What it allows the server administrator to do is to um, offer different types of configuration so that, the, so that the data can be stored on more than one hard drive, which removes the possibility of having a single point of failure. At PickaWeb, we will always use, uh, for our shared hosting, RAID 10. And with RAID 10, you're, you need a minimum of four hard drives, but typically a server will have, say, 16 hard drives in it. And the data is stored across several, um, is copied across several disks. So even if one disk fails, we can just replace it with a new one. There's no data loss whatsoever because it's stored on more than one hard drive. So we use RAID 10. Um, to store your data across several hard drives, which means it's extremely um, reliable and RAID 10 is the best balance of speed and security. Then there's power supply units or PSUs. Uh, obviously, you need to have, make sure that the power to the server is consistent. So we have two PSUs per server to ensure that there's no downtime. If one fails, we can just swap it out and replace it with a new one. And likewise with the network cards, dual cards to ensure the uh, network connectivity is up as much as possible. In terms of the server software configuration, you'll have an operating system, for example, CentOS, which is a Linux based operating system. It's extremely stable and it's a production operating system as opposed to a, a development one. Then you'll need a web server. This is what delivers the content from the web server, from the actual physical server to the internet. And the options here are things like Apache or Lightspeed. And we do use Lightspeed because it's faster than Apache. It's a drop-in replacement for Apache and it's extremely fast. Then you have the, the control panel. As we talked about earlier, um, we use cPanel, which is the mission control. Think of that as being mission control for your hosting service. This is where you can set up your email account, set up databases, set up domain parking, domain add-ons, a whole range of different things. Then there's other software on the server. Cloud Linux is used to improve the performance and ensure that no single user can degrade the performance of the server because they're given a limited, the, the amount of performance that they're allowed to use is limited. Um, then Spam Experts, which is monitoring the outgoing um, email uh, from the server. And the, good, the great thing about this is it maintains our server IP reputation because it does pick up if there's any malware or spam or anything like that being sent out from our servers. Then there's PHP, with, which is a popular scripting language. So if you're building data, database-driven websites, you'll need PHP to to, for, the, um, for, the, for the web page to communicate with the database. And then there's MySQL, which is a database platform. So if you're running something like uh, a blog or an e-commerce uh, application, you'll need a database to store uh, either your blog posts or your, your products, that type of thing. And then uh, there's a one-click script installation service. So if you want to run WordPress or Magento or hundreds of other different types of application, they're all there and free and they can be installed in one click. In terms of extras, if you need do need some extras, there's things like Website Builder, so you can easily build and maintain your own website, even if you're a novice. Then there's Mobile Website Builder. Mobile websites, uh, and mobile friendly websites are extremely important these days. Uh, Google is emphasizing this and is uh, 
promoting mobile friendly websites. So if you want to, to build one, then you can use that tool for that. SSL certificates, HTTPS is extremely important these days. That's a secure form of, of browsing. If you think about the padlock that you'll often see on an e-commerce website, and again, this is something that Google is encouraging that people adopt HTTPS. So if you need, if you want to switch to that, you will need an SSL certificate. Um, on that same vein, in terms of website security, you can have something like a security seal for your website, and this will constantly monitor your your files to ensure that there's no malware, that your file, that your website is safe, and it will show that to your customers. It will show that it's been um, regularly scanned and is malware free to reassure them. If you want to prevent spam coming into your emails, then we have a spam filter which is called Spam Experts. And again, it, uh, it's extremely effective at killing spam. It's over 99% effective. It will only let the your, your proper emails come through and it will just kill spam dead in its tracks. If you need to back up your websites, we do back our servers up, but if you some customers want more control over their backups, and we offer that option for you as well. If you're with another hosting company and you want to migrate, uh, we offer a migration service. So just contact us uh, if you need any help and we can migrate that over for you. So let's just quickly wrap things up then. So shared hosting, that's perfect for most small businesses. You're on a shared server. It's low cost, fast to set up, but there's um, a low level of customization. So if you're running exotic applications, you might want to look at a VPS. Resellers, reseller hosting, that's perfect for web professionals, web designers, web agencies, uh, and anyone who wants to develop an ongoing recurring revenue from their customers. VPS or virtual private servers, these are flexible, powerful, and scalable servers. Then there's dedicated server, again, a secure, powerful option, but slightly more expensive than a VPS. The data center, this is the home of the web, of web hosting. It's a purpose-built facility with multiple redundant features to ensure high uptime for uh, any hosting customers. In terms of hardware configuration, always look for dual components such as CPUs, RAM, hard drives, um, network cards, power supply units. For software configuration, we optimize our servers for performance and reliability and we use tools like Lightspeed to make sure they really operate extremely fast. Then finally there are hosting extras if you need to customize your online presence or make sure that you've got things like a secure website then there's plenty of options there for you. Well that's it thank you very much for your time and attention. Um, if you do need uh, any help with your online marketing then just head over to Maxima Local. We help uh, businesses improve their online um, uh, websites and their, their online uh, positions. So if you do need any help on that front, then just reach out to us. We'd love to hear from you. Thank you very much for your time. If you have any questions or comments, please put them below. We do appreciate them. We do read them and we will answer any that we receive. Thank you very much then. Bye-bye.